Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Hi, before we start, uh, we are just waiting for the doctor to join us. Hi, Dr. Aarti. Yeah, hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, is it clear? I mean, like... Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Anupriya on behalf of Sister Care. And we have with us Dr. Aarti Priyadarshini. And as part of our series of webinars and lives to address misinformation around PCOS and create awareness in this month of PCOS awareness, we have with us um, Dr. Aarti to address our concerns and queries. Dr. Aarti is an obstetrician, women health uh, physiotherapist, and an entrepreneur. She's a consultant with Apollo Hospitals, childbirth expert, lactation specialist, and expert in pre and postnatal fitness. So, um, before we start around uh, our discussion, the, the topic of discussion, which is around pregnancy with PCOS, I would like to request you to um, kind of highlight what PCOS is, what are the symptoms, and when should women uh, choose to doc go to the doctor? All right. Uh, thank you for having me. In, uh, thank you so uh, much think, for us. I think PCOS is one of the most common epidemic. We usually call it as epidemic right now. So that's how it is going on the trend. It's kind of increasing. Uh, so it usually affects about 50, you know, from the age of 15 to about 44 years. So that's what the initial uh, guidelines were. But now we could see the symptoms being, uh, you know, coming up even in the stages of menopause also. The PCOS is like, you know, continuing till the age of menopause. And it affects nearly about 20% of the women population, like one in every five women get PCOS, which is an alarming effect. Like those days, the PCOS was never known thing. Now it's kind of, you know, it's increasing, mainly because our lifestyles and things. I think it's in an alarming stage and our infertility centers are really going in a height. Right? That's the main thing which we really need to keep a check on. Okay. And uh, so... Uh... As we go by the topic, which is around PC, uh, pregnancy with PCOS, there are a lot of myths around it. One of them being that women with PCOS cannot get pregnant. Okay. What do you have to share about it? Definitely not. I think with the upcoming lot of science and technologies, I think that was an old school myth. And uh, nowadays, even women doesn't know the PCOS symptoms unless and until they, you know, when they get married and when they're not able to uh, become pregnant, that's when they start realizing that they have the symptoms of uh, PCOS, right? So it's not that they cannot pregnant. It's just that they have to do little modifications with uh, a good scheme of follow up and treatments. They'll definitely be able to get it. Uh, pregnant and they can have a healthy uh, normal lifestyle like all the other women so it's it's not that uh, such an alarming disease which you really need to be worried of right but it do it does have a uh, lot of long-term chronic complications yeah right? definitely that that has an impact and that's a way you know that's how we people all work uh, we are trying to prevent the long-term complications we tell them yes it has an impact and they need to keep a check on it frequently the main thing, your diabetes and the blood pressure, that's what is a common thing. So we always ask them to keep a check on it. And it yes, it does have a long-term complication, but it doesn't mean they cannot lead a healthy lifestyle. They can lead a healthy lifestyle, but they have to follow proper precautions and proper lifestyle management. So that's what we you know, go about. Great. Um, so um, in terms of pregnancy that we're talking about, if someone has, uh, someone has PCOS and they are looking forward to pregnant, to conceiving so what do you suggest in terms of physiotherapy or active lifestyle what can help them to conceive uh, normally okay so first of all you should understand why is this pcos coming up what is the major cause for it only then you will be understand why we give a physiotherapy treatment right so this, uh, you know, normally you know every woman i mean everybody knows about pancreas that secretes insulin in the body so insulin is the one which takes the sugars to the cells and the uh, fat muscles. You know, that's a basic, basic thing is your sugar gives you the energy to work throughout your day. But unfortunately, what happens is when you take a lot of sugars, like in the form of an improper lifestyle, eating a lot of junks, not exercising, uh, the current work from home nature where everybody sits about eight hours and they work for a long time, 
all those things has a negative implications if you start ingesting more amount of sugars so you basically your insulin is not able to take up so much of sugars so this sugar starts rising up in your blood that's what is your diabetes and things now what does it have an impact on your ovaries that's how does it related to your polycystic ovaries so this insulin has impact on all the other organs the same way it has an impact on the ovaries as well it starts producing one of the uh, major hormone your male hormone so that's when a woman starts getting all these mustachy things you know acne and she gets a black uh, you know black spots in the neck so that's when she starts realizing okay maybe i'm having an pcos and mainly the irregular periods that's when they start to okay i need to check up on why am i not getting periods so this all is basically related to your lifestyle so because you had something extra just because you had a lot of junk foods just because you didn't follow a proper lifestyle that's what has led to your pcos so if that was basically corrected and everything will fall in place right and especially the main thing which really we need to uh, know at this era is like you know people who watch phones in the night okay and who work late nights of course people they have to work but then there are particular there's a particular hormone called as melatonin which actually produced in the night so that happens when you are in the deep sleep basically so what does this melatonin do is that it helps to have a in a common man language it it i mean it helps in the growth of the uh, the ovary the oocyte basically so if this melatonin is not produced because you keep uh, you don't sleep properly in the night you keep watching cell phones this melatonin does not produce when you are exposed to a light so especially when you watch a cell phone in the dark so this melatonin is not at all produced so again it implicates on your pcos so all this changes if it's been corrected in the early stage then automatically pcos can be corrected so coming to your question what exactly we do in physios we focus on the lifestyle we basically assess the person like you know when our patient comes to us we assess what exactly is the height and weight what is the lifestyle what they follow and how what is the eating patterns and everything and we design the exercise based on their yeah, it is not the same exercise what we give for everyone we design each exercise because it is it's particular body somebody i mean some body can do a strength training some can do a cardio so we design the exercises based on that so that's how we start up with the exercises and if someone is looking uh, forward to conceiving is there any different mm-hmm. set of exercises or if you can share a few names of the kind of exercises they can do or mm-hmm. you know kind of physiotherapy treatments they can look into to get pregnant all right so first of all let me tell you what exactly is going to be the time frame and how they need to you know that's a basic thing so when when you start off with your pcos treatment definitely it's, it's a it's a long thing you need to at least work out for a period of 6 months of course and the guidance we need to keep monitoring we need to keep changing your exercises so the first thing would be generally do is we start off with cardio so that's a basic exercises so we put you on a cardio which means you're going to do like a walking is a cardio a jogging is a cardio a simple badminton is also a cardio so you need to work out for about 30 minutes per day so that's a basic which we do right and then once as a progression we put them on a strength training right okay. using like your own body weights you do push ups you do triceps and then you kind of like use your own body weight to do an exercises so we call that as a strength training so once you're okay I mean, like once you start building up your cardio then we move on to your strength training right and sometimes for some people they would have already done an exercises but still they would be having an you know pcos then we start focusing on something called as hit your high intensity interval training where we give some amount of intensive exercises and a period of slow exercise again an intense exercise and a period of slow exercise so it's a mix of both so your body kind of gets you know used up all the energies all the sugars which has been you know excess of sugars so this is how we do with your high intensity training and then there are some exercises which involves mind body like your your zumba or your yoga because some for people who are with a lot of stress so that it will be me assess itself we know okay this kind of person is having a lot of stress then we put them on more on the mind body exercise so we we train them towards you know slow stretching and then we categorize and then we do some kind of a mind body exercise as well so we design we just cannot put uh, the same exercise for everyone so we decide whether to give cardio or whether to give hit or whether mind body exercise so based on their uh, body uh, stages and their lifestyles so that's how we decide about it okay so i think it it also take a science behind it to design these kind of activities uh, 
following question for for this this thing would be that you know there are a lot of complications in pregnancy if someone has pcos so there are a lot of gestational issues uh, pre term birth and uh, pregnancy induced high blood pressure so there are a lot of things which happen which you know kind of scare the person already because there's a lot of information there on internet and when you go through it <laughs> even a single thing like fever can tell you if you could google it you'll be like okay i have had some very major issue so in that case if somebody has these kind of um, issues or you know they are apprehensive if they may have this kind of issue uh, how would you you know kind of help them understand that it's not that difficult okay see so basically uh, if, when you try to start getting conceived your doctors are there your physiotherapist your dietitians all keep you on a proper check right they they follow up it's not that they just put you on a Uh, you know, random drugs. They they follow you for a couple of days. They see how your growths are. They do a periodic scans and they check your scans and periodic reports are being done. And only then they enter into once if you're not able to conceive, that's when they enter into a stage of fertility. But it doesn't mean that like all the PCOS uh, patient, like, you know, everyone who was suffering, I mean, suffering with PCOS, should go for a treatment, right? They can even definitely conceive naturally, but. You just have to be little careful about the miscarriages because if you, you know, there are probability that a PCOS patient can have a lot of miscarriages. It's just a probability. It's not that every uh, PCOS will have a miscarriage. So if you just maintain your weight and if you just do all the lifestyle modifications before you get conceived, then the chances are very, very less. And you can conceive naturally. There are there are patients who have conceived naturally with PCOS and without any kind of treatment. So we see about. Two years of unprotected sex, and then only we decide like whether we can go into a treatment or not, and not that you know just directly jump into for later treatments. Correct. And uh, what kind of uh, in terms of how important is physiotherapy if someone is in you know in the, in the phase of pregnancy and they have PCOS? So this PCOS management starts right from the first. As I told you, we start right from six months before uh, even you get conceived. So we'll have a track of a mother, and I mean, once you get pregnant, we call them as a mother, not no longer a patient, right? So we see them for about six months. We design and formulate the exercise. So by then, I will know how my patient is going to be. Like I know, okay, this kind of exercises will suit her. This kind of exercises will not suit her. So I will know it. So once if she gets pregnant, that will be a follow up for me. i will be able to formulate exercises based on that because there's one probability that a pcos mother can get gestational diabetes okay there are chances so once if they get gestational diabetes again we will have to put them on exercises and then diet control right so we design again uh, we, we do a lot of repetitive exercises of course we need to look into the uh, consider the weight at that time we need to see how the mother is able to do the exercises so based on that we again put in a different set of an exercises for them as i told you repetitive exercises a lot of squats a lot of body weight exercises and things like that so this is very very crucial first thing is to maintain your body weight as you know pcos you know that's the first symptom is like they put excess of weight gain because your periods are irregular your hormones are not being produced properly so the first symptom of your pcos is your uh, irregular periods and of course excess of weight gain so these exercises will help you to burn those extra calories and will keep your weight in check of course along with the diet diet also plays a major role so it goes hand in hand it's not like you eat on one side and then you work out on the other side you need to maintain the uh, balance between the both and then we we kind of like uh, help you to maintain the weight now in case once the weight comes down okay so then you think okay maybe you know my weight has come down should i continue with my exercises definitely yes the reason being there are more chances for your pcos to come back again it's not that once you become pregnant and then you deliver uh, you're cured of your pcos there are more probability that your pcos come and uh, it might return back and there are more possibility that again you might enter into a cycle of irregular periods and uh, uh, again the sugar problems and high bp and high cholesterol things like that so you are the physiotherapy management will be a continuous process and of course uh, the first phase is a very crucial phase and after that it's going to be a, like a, a kind of a just a follow up and not a regular thing correct um so uh, 
for for some time now there have been a lot of buzz around pcos and people are talking about it earlier there were not much information available uh, and there not much people who are talking about it but now we have actor actors and actresses who share that you know for them the e- eating habits their sleeping habits and their workout thing has worked in kind of helping them manage their symptoms so uh, how important for someone who has pcos to incorporate physical activities like exercise yoga in longer run so we say that for example if you have done it you said it, it's it can come back right but then Definitely. how much by what frequency they should maintain it that you know they do not have the symptoms again okay so uh, say let's take an example that my uh, a patient has delivered uh, a kid and then so we usually give that lap period when she's breastfeeding you know that's that's a phase of about 2 uh, 3 months we just give them a rest and then we ask them to resume back with the exercises so that they can be on track with their things because there's more probability that you've been working out so long and all of a sudden you just stop all the exercises there are more probability that you put on a lot of weight and as it is during pregnancy itself you tend to put on a lot of weight and that's a phase where you you know enjoy pregnancy you, you eat and then you put on a lot of weight you gain about 12 kg and then the phase next to it is your breastfeeding phase where again you put on a lot of weight so after that the post feeding phase that's when we ask them to get back on track and we ask them to do uh, the same not exactly the same sort of exercises but we kind of formulate so it's basically like we ask them to do about 150 minutes of exercise at least per week the minimum in case if they're doing a moderate exercises or in case if they're doing a big rest exercise we ask them to do about 75 minutes of uh, per week 75 minutes of exercises per week which might it's, it's kind of like vigorousive exercises it can be an intensive cardio intensive strengthening it can be anything but it should be of 75 minutes in case if you're doing a big rest in case if it's a moderate exercises you can do about 150 uh, minutes of exercise now if you are there to lose weight then you have to increase your schedule uh, if you are planning to lose weight i need to shed extra calories then you have to work out for about 300 minutes per week if you are doing a moderate exercises or it will be about 150 minutes uh, per week in case if you are doing a big rest exercise so it's not like you know you you divide we we divide as a uh 30 minutes cardio and 20 minutes yoga so something of that so we we formulate and we give them a chart you need to follow this particular chart uh they may not uh, you know people think uh, if i have to do exercises i have to go to the gym you know that's that's some of the mindsets people have you know i think i cannot work out at home i have to go to the gym it's kind of expensive it's not that we give them a clear idea this is what you need to do you can even do a home exercises we formulate we design according to the condition of the patient and then So we give the set of exercises mm-hmm. all that need to do is that they have to finish the time frame no matter what that's what is important so that's what help them the sustainability that's what help them to keep going up okay thank you for answering this question so uh, the other thing is that you know for for the longest time we have been relating pcos with pregnancy so as information goes and even our households if there is some concerns around pco uh, around periods then it is related sure. with the fertility of the women and once someone gets pregnant and have baby then they kind of um, you know avoid or or ignore the condition which leads to more chronic diseases right you yeah. just about diabetes insulin resistance and there more other uh, like cardiovascular diseases and cancers so if you have any you know information around the scenario if you can share with us definitely as you were mentioning about the insulin resistance you know there are more probability that they might get those insulin resistance back uh, people always you know once uh, you you have your mother of two kids and once you're working back and you resume back to work you feel like okay you start ignoring your own health now when does that clot thought come back when you start having an irregular periods and when you see some facial changes or okay, you feel having a lot of mustaches that's when you start realizing okay come on i need to know what's happening in my body and that's when they start focusing on their own health now by that time i think you'd have created a lot of negative impacts in your body your insulin would have led you to high blood uh, you know sugar level that's your main your diabetes and especially that's type 2 diabetes now if you get type 2 diabetes you're more prone to pass it to generations as well right and one of the common thing or, or it's i wouldn't say common thing but the most uh, prevalent or most you can expect it to happen is that something called endometrial cancer because just because you you're not ovulating on proper timing your endometrium endometrium is nothing but the lining of the uterus 
which has to be shed every month. That's what is your periods, right? You shed your uterus lining every month. Now, if that is not shed properly, if you're not having a periods on time, and that's when you know that lining up of uh, those endometrial lining causes you know endometrial cancer. So you're more probably have having an endometrial cancers. Now the most common thing is your cholesterol level, which again goes spikes up because of your lifestyle changes, your age, your periods. Everything will will be in uh, disorder. And most common thing which we see uh, after your PCOS is your sleep apnea. You're not able to sleep properly. And I, I, as I mentioned about the previous thing, like you about your hormone rate, they're not produced at proper stages. Your sleep is impacted. Okay, you st- you start having a sleepless nights. You are an insomnia. I mean, you start having insomnia, and that leads to so many other problems. Right, you're not able to focus on the mornings. You tend to have a lot of memory loss, and then that leads to stress. Again, it's completely a vicious cycle. So you're you're just falling onto the whole thing, and of course you're running around with the family things and. it's complete thing and again you end up in having a pcos so it's very very crucial to take care of their health you know uh, let it be uh, you have a kids or not but it's a high time that you keep on check uh, with your pcos now and then and and um, so there's this one question around that uh, there's this information uh, we are not that, that's for you to kind of address that babies born to pcos uh, to mothers with pcos are more prone to preterm birth and uh, and are more prone to admissions at intensive care units is it so no it's not it is not like not mandatory unless and until they have a higher complications during the pregnancy right mm-hmm. that's when we start your exercises right from 18 weeks and 14 weeks itself so that they keep their maintaining their main uh, weight and sugars unless and until they have higher sugars or if there is bp which is fluctuating that's when they are more prone for having a premature delivery and end up in having an nice babies but in case if you maintain a proper uh, healthy uh, diet and exercises right from the first and proper lifestyle modification right from the start of your pregnancy you can definitely you know have a, a very good natural even people there there who have delivered normally owns like you know most of them deliver normally owns so it has no way correlated with your premature delivery or your normal delivery or cesarean delivery at all So PCOS is just a factor, and uh, you know, once you get treated properly, you can definitely be. It. But it's a long-standing case, so it's that you need to remember that. But it definitely can be kept under check with proper guidance. Yeah. So we can conclude that being active uh, during your pregnancy can help in addressing these factors and also the uh, birth-related concerns for babies. Yeah, that definitely is. That's a major thing. uh right from the start keep on check with your diet and keep on check with your uh, exercises and that'll actually keep you on track that's like you know underline and hashtag <laughs> great so um that was the question you know those were the questions that you have had uh thank yeah. you for taking out your time for us and we'll definitely reach out to you for more concerns definitely i think uh, it's very important i think sister care is literally dealing out with the pcos and they giving a really holistic uh, management right so that's what is important in a pcos setup like you know you need to focus on all the factors it's not only your uh, exercise it's your stress management i think you give that setup with your yoga and zumba and physio and lifestyle modification and dietary changes i think that's what gets going you know uh, i think you people are doing a really great job with that Thank you so much. Thanks, please. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll take. We'll take the leave for now, and we'll reach out to yeah. you with more. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. Thank you.